It now looks like uh, the street has uh, gone back to normal. No sign of protesters there. I want to bring in our correspondent, uh, Jane Ferguson, who's also in uh, Alexandria for us. Uh, Jane, what happened? Do we know what happened to the thousands of people who took part in Friday prayers not long ago? Well, we're starting to see some groups of people gathering in the street down on the Corniche. Now, the picture that you're seeing is likely to have been outside the Al-Qaeda Ibrahim Mosque there, where a lot of the pro morsi supporters had gathered for Friday prayers. Now, those Friday prayers will have finished by now. So the next hour is really going to be crucial here in terms of the numbers that we're going to see on the streets and whether or not there will be any violence. So far, it has been calm in Alexandria. There is a very strong security forces presence on the streets. We've seen huge vehicles filled with uh, central security forces from the police. Now, on the way into Alexandria, we also saw tanks stationed on the side of the main Cairo to Alexandria Road. There wasn't any trouble. There was clearly no uh, indication of the tanks being used, but there were gunners at the ready there. So there's, it's a tense situation here, but so far, the protesters seem calm, but the uh, security forces are going to be watching very closely to see where they go and how big their numbers are going to swell. Yeah, Jane, Alexandria, of course, known as uh, Egypt's second city, and it has been the scene of many protests in the past, some of them violent, including on Wednesday. Uh, that was the first place that protesters came out to demonstrate their anger about the security crackdown in Cairo. Very much so, um, and also uh, a place that has seen very, very strong support and a big turnout for pro Morsi uh, protesters. So the security forces and the government are likely to, to be watching those scenes in Cairo and then looking anxiously up at Alexandria because the, the two cities do tend to reflect one another when it comes to these protests. So there will be uh, eyes watching the streets here just as closely as in Cairo. Now, right now, things are still calm. It seems calmer than the images that you're seeing from Cairo. But like you say, in the past, things here have turned violent. So it's a very tense situation. And really, the next hour or two is going to show what the day is going to be like here. Yeah, and for people, again, that's, I guess it's the same as in Cairo. For those who, who don't want to get involved in, in anything political, are they, do you think, intending to stay away, keep off the streets? I mean, they've had enough warning from the fact that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood had made this call to arms, if you like, had said, please come out on the streets, please support us. They knew that it was likely to happen, bearing in mind Alexandria's history. Well, you know, when you're in the street in Egypt, a heavily populated country, it can be difficult to tell who is on what side or on any side. People still have to go about their daily life. And, of course, now people are, are, uh, are trying to operate normal life under a curfew. On the road up here, we find it surprisingly busy. But then when one considers that they have just come out of an all-night curfew, people still have to go about their business. We've seen trucks uh, carrying fruits and vegetables up the road, people still trying to, to operate business. So here in the street, there are still people around. There are cars driving. It, it, it does not seem abandoned by anyone, and it certainly doesn't seem as though everybody is here to protest. So at the moment, the people seem fairly calm. Now, that could change, of course, if the streets become violent. Uh, people still have to try to go by their daily life, although, of course, because it is a Friday, a holy day here and a day off work, that will be a bit easier for people on the ground. Yeah, and, you know, just explain to people, we're, we are in a state of emergency in Egypt. There are certain curfews operating in certain provinces. How does that affect ordinary people? Well, the curfew does seem to be taken seriously. A lot of people, the roads are getting busier just before the curfew is implemented. Now, there has been some confusion. Um, the, the, the curfew timings in the evening seem to be changed from 5 to 7 to 9. They've been cha changed several times. Um, and, and what we have seen are, are several uh, security forces, uh, checkpoints along the roads that we've gone to. They don't seem tense. They just seem a little bit more intensified than normal. So for people for ordinary life, I mean, businesses seem to be open. Um, people are just being more secure. Some businesses seem closed, closed. The, the doors are closed, but they are operating. You know, from where I from where I am right now, I can see shops open and business as usual in that regard. I think for most Egyptians, who of course have been struggling under huge economic hardships since the revolution, near economic collapse here, people really have to survive. And, and often for small business owners, that means 
staying up as long as you can. Now, of course, they can shutter their shops if things here get bad, but right now it seems to be 50-50. Some shops shuttered, but that could be normal for a Friday. Again, a day off work and a holy day here. So, uh, but, but other shops open and people sitting at the back, I can see people uh, smoking shisha right here in the street. So uh, they, they, they seem to be tense. Less women and children in the street, uh, mostly men, but, uh, but still a relatively normal feel um, so far today. Jane, thanks very much indeed. Jane Ferguson joining us live from Alexandria. I want to explain a little bit more about what is happening in Tanta, the city uh, 90 kilometres north of the capital, Cairo. We're getting information that uh, the Interior Ministry says that uh, Morsi supporters were heading towards a government building in Tanta when the security forces started firing tear gas bombs and bird shots to stop them from reaching this particular government building. And that is when these clashes began. So that, that is what we're hearing, is that uh, the Interior Ministry is saying that uh, they saw some pro Morsi supporters heading towards a particular government building, don't know which one it is, in Tanta. So the security forces started firing tear gas bombs and bird shots to stop them from reaching the building. Of course, we have no independent verification that that is how the events in Tanta unfolded but certainly you can see we are looking at a picture of a small number of protesters in one part of Tanta you can see what uh, appears to be a branch uh, set alight in the street there we saw earlier that uh, tear gas canisters had been thrown one way and it looks like the protesters were trying to throw them back again